7, this is your City Councilor Pro Tem, Wardeen Alexander. I am so excited to have you join us for our first webisode, D7 on the Move. You may ask, well, what is this all about? This is an opportunity for us to come together to talk about topics that are relative to those of us who live in District 7. Following our recent town hall, I thought, let's bring these topics to our residents on a more frequent basis. So every month, Following the last city council meeting at 1 p.m., I'd like for you to tune in to our webisode so you can find out how D7 is on the move. I am very honored to welcome as our first guest, none other than our mayor, Randall Whitman. And I'd like to thank you, Mr. Mayor, for taking this opportunity to come and just talk with the citizens of District 7. So thank you so much for joining yeah, me today. Absolutely, happy to be on. Um, District 7 is on the move, happy to work with you. I'm happy you're doing this too, a, a, an additional tool in your toolbox to engage the residents of District 7. So if anything I can do to be helpful today, let me know. Well, I appreciate that. And you've been that way with me for um, since I was appointed and then elected to the council. And of course, most of the citizens know our relationship goes a little further when we work together and serve together on the Board of Education. Right. And uh, so I do enjoy this opportunity to work with you in this capacity as we continue to serve not only the residents of District 7, but the city of Birmingham. So again, thank you. Well, I want to start today with probably first most on everyone's mind, including yours and mine, is the coronavirus yes. and what we're doing here in the city, how each, this is impacting all of our lives. I think I can get you to um, just uh, say, uh, as well as anyone else, this is probably something we've never seen in our lifetime, right? No, this, what's happening in our city dealing with the COVID-19, um, dealing with the coronavirus is unprecedented. Mm -hmm. um, it was probably uh, right at a hundred years ago um, the influenza pandemic struck not only America but struck Birmingham. Uh, we had the we were the sixth um, sixth city in the nation with the worst cases. I think you fast forward a hundred years later. This is something that I never thought we would deal with, right? That you're dealing with an actual health crisis that's actually now created an economic crisis at the exact same time in our city. And the first thing I want the residents of District Seven to know that is that. We're working together, we're working with your colleagues, and the number one goal is public safety during the health crisis, which we need the residents of District 7 to not only take this seriously, uh, but they need to do things to continue to protect themselves and others. So the first thing is practicing good common sense. Okay, so I'm speaking to the health issue by itself. Um, I want to encourage your residents to, um, if they feel sick, stay at home. But not only stay at home, quarantine yourself from the remaining of the family members in that household. Two, continue to practice not good, but great hygiene. Keep washing your hands. Keep hand sanitizer on you. Um, clean area, top surface areas as well. Then the third thing, can't stress this enough, be very, very intentional about social distancing. Mm -hmm. So we need the residents of District 7 to not do or have interactions outside of their family with people who are not their family, where they're touching, hugging, kissing, holding hands, shaking hands. Right now, that is not good because that would create and promote the spread of, of community of, of community spread. We don't need that. We have to flatten this curve. And when I say that, I like to tell people, if the cases start here and all of a sudden spike like this, we're trying to um, prevent that spike from continuing up. We need to bring it back down to flatten it. So that means our behavior has to change. And I do want to go back to just a little bit about the social distancing. And I know uh, we are going into a phase where we want to shelter in place, we want to stay in place, uh, avoid people as much as we can, follow those rules that have been uh, given to us by the health department. What do you have to say for individuals who feel that this is not a threat or this is something that will just pass over? Any. Um, statements or thoughts you'd like to give to those individuals. I know you've talked about some of the seriousness of this, but what about the person that just feels that, well, why is the government imposing on me? And why, are, why are we doing this? Here's why. Uh, we need every resident to take this very seriously. Um, the, the examples I like to give are the following. Each of us knows our mother or our grandmother who wants to go to church. Let's say she's at church the things you do at church, you shake hands, you hold hands, you hug, you kiss. You do that as a collective because it's community, so we embrace each other. But let's say someone has the, the coronavirus and don't know they have it. 
And so while they're hugging and kissing and shaking hands and holding hands, they're passing it to everyone else they come into contact with. Those people leave church and then go back to their home with their family. They leave church and the next day go back to work with their coworkers. And all of a sudden you have community spread all over. Let's say you're the young person and you say, well, even if I got it, I'll be okay. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is you're outside playing basketball, making physical contact while people are sweating. And you bring it back to your house, right. to your mama, big mama. You, 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 you playing dice and you're using the same dice. You're playing a car game, using the same cars, touching the same cars. That's just not smart. Right now. I think the more intentional we are about having social distance now, the quicker we can get back to our normal way of life. If we don't do the hard, necessary steps now, then we're going to be doing this a very long time. I'm very excited for the fact that as a city, we are moving forward and we're one of the first to fall in line and um, to, to do this again for the safety of our citizens. Well, so that's, that's thanks to you. That's thanks to your colleagues as a Thank council, you. as a body for champions. This doesn't happen without you and your, and your support, your colleague support. Well, thank you. And let's talk a little bit about the economic piece. We right. hit on that uh, earlier. And so I know that as a city, we're trying to do some things that will help our small businesses. Just give me your thoughts and what we can do as a city to impact the small businesses. I believe you were one of the first counselors that called me that says, what are we going to do about the small business owners all over the city, but definitely District 7? They're all over District 7. Right. You have small business owners, okay. all small businesses all over 7. Um, mom and pop stores, Correct. and grocery stores, and seamstress, and I just, all type of places that deliver goods and services. So the first thought I think about is the small business owner. Then I think about their employees as hourly workers. The health department shuts down or forces businesses to shut down all of a sudden. The small business owner has to shut their door, which means they have to lay off their employees, and that sends a ripple through the community. So you first are grieving for that small business owner, right. but then you're grieving for their hourly employees because their employees, whether they have 50 or 25 or 10, mm -hmm. are out of work. The city of Birmingham, um, again, with the support and champion of the council, has decided that we need to create a Birmingham Strong Fund. The BHAM Strong Fund allows the city of Birmingham to put in dollars, but those dollars are not only match one for one, but one to two to one by the private sector to find a way to offset the losses that businesses, even in District 7, are currently experiencing because of the health crisis with the coronavirus. Your wisdom, pass the BHAM Strong Fund. Um, you put, one, you allow 1.2 million to be in that fund, it's already one for one match. And I imagine as the days go by, more money's gonna come into the fund. So uh, you've already started encouraging residents of District 7 to go to bhamstrong.com. I was gonna ask you, how can my residents and those business owners in District 7 find out about as well as to apply for that assistance? So the easiest way um, on their cell phone, um, through a website or any device, they can literally go to bhamstrong.com. That's bhamstrong.com that allows those business owners to um, go through a process, um, fill out, see if they're eligible based on how many employees they have, based on how long they've been open, based on if their business has experienced loss because of the coronavirus. Uh, Bob Dickerson of the BBRC has, a, has um, created a process through an advisory board where they assess those small businesses and they'll be allowed to receive up um, to a certain amount of money for an actual 180 day, day interest-free loan to help support during this rough time. I want to thank you not only as the counselor for District 7 but just as an individual that lives in the district who cares about the quality of life for those who work in the district so thank you. That's right absolutely this is this is tough man. I'm, our positions as a counselor as mayor we, we, we leave City Hall we drive through our district and we've been, we've been happy to see businesses flourish. In the last 10 days, it's tough, in one hand, having a concern for the health of our residents, but in another, seeing doors shut, seeing lights off, not seeing people move about, uh, and seeing these businesses close. It's, it's, 
whatever we can do, we should do. I know for me, it's um, been a real struggle even driving in and just coming down 3rd Avenue or coming in uh, to get to City Hall, just seeing some of those storefronts that are closed and thinking about the people that work there right. or the business owner that had to make that decision, right. again, to uh, keep, and it, keep everyone safe. So uh, we do just want to be sure that everyone goes and will say that, um, where they can contact for that information again. That's behamstrong.com, behamstrong.com. And my last question, and this is just something I want to ask you, you talked to us a lot today about your role and how you're processing this as the mayor of the city. If you could just tell the residents of District 7, how is Randall, the son, the brother, the nephew, the uncle, how is this affecting you in your personal life? So, if I'm, if I'm being totally honest, yeah. in situations like this, I'm able to um, do a couple of things. One is I'm comfortable being a rock. And so in my personal life, family, we've experienced loss mm -hmm. multiple times in tragic ways. Mm -hmm. And I've, I always find a way, uh, whether it's for my mom, whether it's for my dad or my siblings, to be the rock of our family. I think we're in the position um, um, as mayor to be the rock for our city. Um, that requires, but things are so fluid and things are changing at a rapid pace. And people are looking for some form of direction and leadership that the first thing I can do is provide calmness, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Second thing I can do is, is be a leader, make tough decisions, even if it's unpopular. Mm -hmm. But if it's the right thing to do, do it. Three is to over-communicate, right? Mm -hmm. So when I leave here, am I tired? Yes. Uh, am I, uh, do I want to get off my feet? Yes. Do I want to have a drink? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to ride your bicycle? You used to be I, a big bicycle rider. Damn, I snuck out okay. riding my bike two days ago. Don't tell no I won't tell oh, you that. just say that. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Yes, um, but here are ways I find to just regroup. One is I check in on people. Mm -hmm. um, so I do wellness checks by phone, mm -hmm. whether it's FaceTime, mm -hmm. text, stuff like that. Um, finding some time to read. That's been hard the last 10 days because we've been in a state of emergency. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, did, I do like to ride the bike. That's very, that gives me peace. And I like to read. That gives me peace. Well, that's wonderful. I, I just can't thank you enough for the leadership you've shown. And I've always known you to be very chill, and so we appreciate that calmness right now because I think for a lot of us, we're about to go stir crazy, but it's given a lot of time to internalize yes. and maybe clean out that closet that yes. you had clean. But again, we know that other people, though, have concerns about their well-being as far as not being able to work and do those things. Right. So I, again, thank you for that leadership yeah, in uh, affording us that opportunity. Yeah. I do want to ask I'll just add this one thing, because you did bring up about checking in on people, and um, we have to remember our elderly, or yes. we have to remember yes. those yes. that yes. are so homebound. Important. And so um, let's just all think about what we can do, because I did get a call from a resident, and recently I sent out a robocall to the residents in District 7, telling them about how they could go to the website, or they could text the number to find more information. Right. And can you just follow up with some of the ways that even our homebound citizens can communicate or find more information? One of the ways is we want people to, um, if they have a cell phone, mm -hmm. that they can text um, BHM COVID, that's BHM COVID to 888-777. Again, text BHM COVID to 888-777. That allows them to stay in contact mm -hmm. with us. Uh, but if they only have a landline, from time to time, we'll be doing a, these town Thank halls and styles mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. people can call in, listen, participate in the conversation, Perfect. and ask any questions. Mm -hmm. Another way is, uh, this is really important, just if you have a landline or a cell phone, call 211. That gives you direct access to United Perfect. Way. Mm -hmm. So some of our elders or some of our young people may be experiencing loss, loss of job, which means probably loss of access to food and Meals on Wheels and other forms of getting food to people who need it, please dial 211. And then I would say another way is this, um, through social media, through text, through phone, um, but nothing still beats either attending a neighborhood meeting or having some hybrid of that now, mm -hmm. which means communicating with your, right. your neighborhood president, mm -hmm. uh, staying informed, because we, we keep them informed. Well, thank you for that, because what we've been doing in District 7, we have been sending out weekly emails to our neighborhood leaders, as well as to a group of clergy that we've been meeting with quarterly, coffee with the clergy, and so we've been giving them messages that they can provide to the citizens. So thanks for the reminder on that. We're very happy. I think everyone can see that we're working together. Yep. 
We thank you, Mr. Mayor, for coming over and just talking with us and being our first guest. And as always, D7 is on the move. Thank you.